you, my friends. God bless you. Even technology can't hold us down. God is faithful. God is faithful, ladies. God is faithful. If you call upon the name of Jesus, what's up, brother? Good to see you again. If you call upon the name of Jesus, you can't be saved. The Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We are here to lift up the name of Jesus, for he is worthy. The Lamb of God is worthy. He who knew no sin became sin, so that through him we might be made the righteousness of God. You were created in the image of God. You were not created in the image of Satan. You were created in the image of God. Even Satan himself, Lucifer created in the image of God. But you see, the great lie is that we can be like God. We can be equal with God. We can be our own God. Even society will teach you that. Be your own boss. Be in control of your life. Take control. You don't need to follow someone who's going to be a taskmaster over your life and give you a lot of rules to live by. Just live and let live. Do whatever is going to make you happy. Be your own God. And this is the same lie that Satan told Eve in the Garden of Eden. The same lie that brought about the downfall of man. The seed that corrupted us and led to so much suffering, even the suffering of childbirth born from that original sin. But you see, Satan only has the power that God gives him. Satan or Lucifer was created in the image of God and he tried to usurp God's authority, wanted to be equal with God. So he was cast out of heaven and the Bible does say that he is now the ruler of this world, that Satan is the prince of the power of the air, he is the ruler of this present world. And we are walking in darkness and many of us are bound in spiritual chains and spiritual uh, addictions and heaviness and weight. There's so many burdens that weigh us down, anxiety that cripples us and some of you can't even work because the anxiety is so strong and heavy over your life. Depression that makes us consider every day of our life, wondering how we're going to make it, how we're going to finish what we've started, how we're going to continue in our relationships, how we're going to make it just another moment in this life. It makes us consider our life and many people are even now questioning ending their life because the depression is so crippling. But these are chains, the bondages of sin and Satan has held us down for too long. But if you call on Jesus, the chains can be broken. The bondages of your soul can be broken off and you can walk in true and lasting freedom. And that's what I want for you today, my friends. What does it profit if we gain the world and then forfeit our soul into hell? What does it profit us if we gain all that the world offers us, but then we suffer eternal damnation and separation from God? God does not want you to be separate from Him. He does not want you to suffer in any way that is at the hand of Satan. Now, suffering is important. It is something that God will lead us into as a believer because the refining fire of God makes us more like Him. Difficulties cause us to become more like God. We go through trials and testing, refinement. The pressure brings forth the diamond. But my friends, many of us, we don't want any calamities except for the ones we already have. So we say, no, thank you, I don't want that. We continue on our merry way. Not understanding that a day of suffering at the hand of being led by an almighty God is so much greater, so much more rewarding, so much more spiritually uh, beneficial to us in being a good person and loving our neighbor as ourselves and putting ourselves last. The suffering that we suffer at the hands of God as he leads us to becoming a, a better Christian, a better person, the suffering at his hand is something that allows the world to see our life and testify of the goodness of God. But the suffering at the hands of Satan brings about destruction and death. The suffering at the hands of Satan brings about emotional bondage where we can't see forward and we can't see backwards. We're bound in chains of heaviness and despair. Some of us have fear that cripples us, which leads us into eating disorders. Eating disorders are much more prevalent than we know, than we know, man. Many women walk around with eating disorders, and I'm here to tell you it's rooted in fear. Go back to your childhood, find out what that fear is. Ask Jesus to set you free and pray against it, and I promise you, he can give you freedom which is lasting. He can help you to have a healthy association with food, not to emotional eat or to withhold food as a form of punishment, but to understand that it is a nourishment that 
uh, continues, uh, uh, that, that, that helps us to continue in life. That food is a tool just like money or our vehicle or our home. It's a tool to be used so that we can carry out the will of God on this earth as his ambassadors. Jesus is life. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. What does it profit us if we gain the world and then forfeit our soul? I want you to know the kingdom of God has come near to you. I want you to know that you have a choice now. You can choose to walk whatever way you want, but you're either walking towards God or you're walking away from God. You're either walking towards God or you're walking away from God. There is no middle of the road. There is no lukewarm. Even Jesus said he will spit you out of his mouth if you are lukewarm. We cannot... Hey, bro, it's pretty cowardly to just say something as you walk by. Come and let's talk like a man, bro. Yeah, let's talk like a man. Come on, let's have a conversation. Why do you say F that? Why do you say F that? I'm trying to help people, bro, yeah. And eating disorder is rooted in fear. It's rooted in childhood trauma. It's rooted in a... Are you a medical professional? Are you a medical professional? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> And what? What? What would you? What is your? What is your medical definition of why women have an eating disorder? Well, it definitely doesn't have to do with proselytizing about Jesus. Oh, does it? Oh, and you with no spiritual things? Are you a pastor, sir? Are you a pastor? You have tattoos, exactly. You're using your own fallacy again. Come on, man. So you're a doctor, but you don't want to give a doctor's opinion. I'm a preacher. I'm giving a preacher's opinion. Are you an expert or not? Cowards run. I'm here to tell you, ladies, that yes. Eating disorders are rooted in fear. And the Bible says that you don't have to fear, that you can fear not. The Bible says we will not fear though the earth be removed and the mountains carried into the midst of the sea. Our God is a refuge and our strength. I used to be bound in fear. I used to go through a lot of, man, I'm telling you, my childhood is full of trauma and pain. I lived a very difficult life and my childhood is rooted in fear, but you know what? I fear no man. I'm able to stand here with strong knees and a strong back and strong shoulders because I know the power of God is with me. I know that we will not fear because God is with me. I have a wall of fire and angels of God protecting me. I don't have to fear nothing. We don't have to fear COVID. We don't have to fear bad guys with guns and doing all these things. We just saw an assassination attempt against a former president. We out here partying like nothing happened. Our country is crumbling. We're partying like nothing happened. The world is crumbling around you and we're laughing about it like nothing is wrong. My friends, now is the time. We have to get right with God. I love you and I care about you. It is the will of God. Or excuse me, it is not the will of God that any should perish, but that all might come to repentance. And we've hardened our hearts against the ways of God. We've turned our back against God. You don't have to fear. If God is with you, what can man do to you? The worst you can do is die. But you know what? The spirit realm is more real than the physical. Your, your body is but a, a very small and finite thing. It is made of dust and spit. You understand? It's made of water and dirt. And you came from the dust, you're going to go back to the dust. But the soul that is inside of you, ladies and gentlemen, the soul that is inside of you, it will go to heaven or hell. And we cannot blame God if we stand before him in shame. We've denied him in a lifetime. God is saying, come near to me. I will take away your sin. I lived and died for you. I rose from the dead on the third day. Jesus lived and died so that you could have salvation. And we cannot deny him and then get mad at him when we stand in eternity. I'm telling you, we're going to be shaking in our boots, begging God for another moment. Just another moment to repent for our sins and to find life. It's going to be too late. And your mama, your daddy will not be there to save you. You'll be naked in your sin, ladies and gentlemen. And what will, it, what will we say in that time as to how we will account for our life? What will we say in that time of why we rejected Jesus continually? It's a harder message because we have stiffened our necks at the gospel. We say, no, thank you. We continue our way because the taste of sin is too delicious. I want to shake my booty. I saw some men down there yesterday getting whipped by strippers on the street. We got no shame, gentlemen. Why is it that we just have no shame? We're willing to let all of our inhibitions out and we just want to do whatever we want to do and we don't care who sees us anymore because society is crumbling. This would not happen a hundred years ago. At least back in the day, people had honor. There's no honor anymore, man. 
Where are we as fathers, as husbands in our households? Some of y'all out here without your wives, without your girlfriends, some of you without your husbands, you know what you're doing. There's a lot of adultery and infidelity and so much going on. You're getting in bed with strangers and you're taking God knows what home with you. I want you to be ashamed. I want you to think about your life. But at the same time, you can be forgiven. If you ask God to forgive you, he will forgive you. Because guess what? I'm better than no man. I've lived a life of sin. I know what it's like to make crazy, stupid choices. I've had my hands in plastic bags and I've, I've found myself at the bottom of bottles and I know what it's like to do a lot of bad things. But God can help us and restore us. Don't wait until you're forced to face the consequences of your sin to think back on your life and say, maybe I should have went a different path. Don't wait until your home is broken, your children are separated. Don't wait until your career is once again staring you in the face and you're unhappy. My friends, now is the time. Get right with God. I'm out here for no other reason. I don't want your money. I don't want fame or honor. There's nothing in this that's going to make me cool or a celebrity or anything. There's nothing in it for me. I want you to know God. I don't want you to go to hell. I want to call you brother and sister in Christ. The Christianity we see on TV, the caricature of religion on TV and the radio, that's not real Christianity. We are to love our neighbor as ourselves. We are to forgive those who persecute us, forgive our enemies. We are to live selflessly as servants of Christ, helping each other. That's the will of God. That's the heart of God. So if my message is tough, I'm sorry, but I want you to hear the truth tonight. And you have an opportunity while there is time. Ask God to forgive your sin. Ask God to make you new. God bless you, man. God bless you, man. Have a good night, ladies. While there is time, cry out to Jesus and find life at the cross. While there is time, find Jesus. While there is time, ask him to forgive you. It doesn't matter what you've done. God will and can forgive you. He will not deny you. The Bible says, if you ask, you will receive. If you seek, you will find. If you knock, the door will be open. If you cry out to Jesus, he's not going to say, oh, are well, you too ugly? Come back later when you look better. You are not going to be denied on how rich or poor you are, on the color of your skin, on your economic background, nothing. Jesus said, come, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. It doesn't matter who you are, what you look like, where you came from. Jesus wants your soul. Man judges the outward appearance, but God judges the heart. God judges the heart. And unfortunately, the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 17, the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Now, what do we do about that? The Bible also says that God will give us a new heart of flesh. He'll take a hardened heart of stone and he'll give us a new heart of flesh. And he is the potter, we are the clay. And the Bible says in Isaiah that he will mold us and make us and that he will help us to be like him. Through suffering, through refinement, Jesus will make us like him. And we come not in condemnation, the Bible says in the book of John, uh, yeah, in the gospel of John chapter 3. I came not to condemn the world, but that through me the world might be saved. Jesus doesn't want to condemn you. It is your default state. In our sin, we are condemned. We are separated from God. We are enemies of God. But in repentance, Jesus brings us close by the blood of the Lamb. By his own blood that was spilled on Calvary. The certificate of death for all our sin nailed to the cross with Christ. Jesus is the way. He is the life. He is the truth. He is everything. My friends, what does it profit us if we experience everything this world has to offer? We gain the, the honor and the praise of men. We stand on top of the highest stages. We stand in award shows at the, I don't even know what the award shows are called. What are they called? Whatever these movie award shows are called. We getting Honor. called up before the world, getting honors and praise of men. What does that matter? If we stand before God at the end of all things and we stand ashamed and our sin is laid bare before us and he shows all the despicable, shameful stuff that we've committed throughout our lifetime. Jesus died in your place his blood was spilled as a payment for your sin so you don't have to pay that price of sin he was a substitute a substitutionary atonement for you 
He paid the penalty. So all you have to do is receive the free gift by believing on the cross, by believing that Jesus gave his life as a ransom for many. God bless you, ladies. And we're going to be holy as he is holy. My friends, God is faithful. We are not faithful. We fail every single day. We make mistakes. But my friend, we cannot live in willful, habitual sin and then expect God uh, to draw us close to him. We have to let go of the world. The Bible says, be not conformed with the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. That we are not a friend of the world, but that we're going to be a friend of God. And that a friend of the world is an enemy of God. See, the Bible says all these things and we have to know what it says. We say, well, God knows my heart. God knows that I try, I make mistakes. God knows my heart. I love him and I pray all the time. But if you continue to do all those things that God has told you not to do, and I'm not saying like, oh, you're trying, but you're failing, you don't have the power, but you know and you're doing it anyway and you take pleasure in it, the willful habitual sin will destroy you. Now, if you're trying and failing, it, needs you, it means you need the power of God. We spend time on our knees in prayer we ask God to put his spirit inside of us and manifest himself inside of us in a way that we have power to overcome every evil thing that comes against us. That we're in a spiritual war, ladies and gentlemen, and the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. That means I'm not fighting against you right now. I care about you. You're in a spiritual war. If you feel a certain type of way about me, it's because there's something spiritual in your life that doesn't like the message. But because angels and demons are real, the Holy Spirit is real, and Lucifer himself is real. And we're in a spiritual war. And as I said yesterday when I was preaching, you're either fighting the demons or you're feeding the demons. I don't want you to take a good hard look at your life and say, am I feeding the demons in my life or am I fighting against them? Now, we can't fight by punching walls. You can fight against these demons by getting on your knees, your face before God and say, God, set me free from these chains and these shackles. Set me free and give me life. I want to be like you. Change me, oh God. Give me the strength that I need to overcome and to walk as you walk, to love as you love, to be holy as you are holy. The Bible says we must be born again. That's the first step. So if you feel a leading, call out to God and say, God, save me. Ladies, I want you to understand God loves you. He sees you, all right? He sees you in your pain. He sees you in your anxiety, your heaviness, okay? I want you to know that God will be faithful. If you talk to him, he will hear you, okay? God bless you. Just take a moment. Talk to him sometime. Read your Bible. All right. God bless you. Thank you. I'm glad you said that. If we talk to God, he will talk back. I promise you. I promise you. There is a wonderful work that God can do in your life. There is a wonderful work that God can do in your life. I'm going to say it one more time. There is a wonderful work that God can do in your life. And I believe in this for you. That God can set you free from anything and everything that's holding you back. How do I know? Because I lived in chains for years. I lived in shackles of sin. Demons tear me up, eat me up at night. Eating up my thoughts. Controlling my behaviors. Causing addictions. Causing temptation. And if God can set me free, I'm telling you, I used to, I've done so many bad things. If God can set me free, ladies and gentlemen, God can set anyone free. If God can give me hope, I promise you he can give anyone hope. He can take you through the valleys and over the mountains of life. He can break you free from the chains and the bondages of sin that are making you feel so weighed down and heavy. God is faithful. God is faithful.